Thermal Sound Wave. wave. Thermal Sound Wave, the natural alternative to fast food radio, track left radio, WLGK Logic Radio, Chicago. We hear C2 Kevin Lawrence. Hit us up, 347-454-1278. Email us, thermalsoundwave at gmail.com. And as uh-huh. I mentioned before, we're joined by a guest of ours. It's that fan that's uh, been on with us many, many times for many, many different episodes and, and whatnot. But you know how we do on the Natural many Alternative Fan. He has uh, some new things that he has going on, so we got to bring him into the fold now to talk about all those things that's going on with him. We got none other than John O., Jonathan O., John O., the, the, the first. Or the second, <laughs> I get confused. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 It's the journey of a father and son, either which way, and I love it when I see it. It's beautiful. Hey, hey, real quick, I'm, I'm on my headphones. Am I coming through good? Because I want to make sure this is clear, and if it's not, let me just take them off and go through the phone. So am well, I coming through all well, right? Before? Well, second thing, second thing, uh, John, we was recording, so we would tell you that. Uh, if you want to, but thank you for being professional. Tell me, everybody, journey of a father and son. Hey, man, I just want to keep it 100. I don't want the listeners to be here in no backseat, none, none of that. You know, I'm, you know, I've been doing this for years, so man, you know, it, it, it's nothing new. But I just got to make sure my people's come across right, and and, and that I come across right. <laughs> you got no people, no. you know, because I represent, I represent, I represent thermal sound waves as well. So that we we good we good son. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> okay. So with free. that being said, you you and you won't get no phone. You won't you won't get him. That, that dude never picks up his phone. So you call all you want. Oh man. So uh, yes, so there is no John more John and Priest anyway. Yes, John was in the building. Yo, I'm gonna direct all my questions to See Truth, man, because I, I don't got the time for John Lawrence. What's up, T? <laughs> hey, you the hater, dog. You the hater. John over the hater. What up? Oh man. So let's 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 start with that. Let's let's, let's go to the whole Gecko Brothers, because you are one third or one half <laughs> the Gecko Brothers. But uh, is, is is the Gecko Brothers no more? Is like the, is it true that you you cut the dead weight that's that's preached forever? Like you no longer uh, part of the fold? Like what's going on with the Gecko Brothers? Like we gonna break them up. Did uh, I cut the dead weight that is named Priest? Hilarious. Um, no, I have. Unfortunately, I have not cut the dead weight yet. It's it's, it's coming though. It's coming. It's definitely coming. <laughs> no man, uh, we we are still a. We are still a duo, uh, you know. Um, on occasions, I just decide to do my own thing because I, I got to continue to keep our name out there in some kind of form or fashion. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so Gecko Brothers are still in full effect as of now. We're still a group. Who knows what the, what the third will be? That don't sound good. That don't sound good. We done. That's what it sounds like to me. It's all good, though. Yo. It's, it's, it's really all good, though. Oh, okay, well, you know, hey, hey man. Sometimes it be like that. Right, right now we ain't, we ain't, we ain't together. Right now I'm doing my own thing. So technically it's over now. <laughs> right. Gotcha. All right. So everybody, John stay tuned. John O'Ruffin. That's right. That's stay right. Stay tuned to uh, what's going on with the Gecko Brothers. You know, things could be changing at any any moment. But that's why y'all gotta, you know, make sure y'all follow them. Make sure y'all, you know, keep in contact and all that to get the latest on what's going on. Now. For right. the record, you're John O the second, is that right? Yes, I'm John Holly the second. I'm John Holly the second. Uh, I'm the only one that calls myself John O. My dad was just John. He didn't call himself John O. Or, you know, they either called him John or John Holly. Uh, and then my son, as we all know, is J O. <laughs> just a, you know a, a shorter version of that. And me, I'm John O. Like everybody knows me, John O. But it is three of us: my dad, me, and him. All John Ali. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And how is your 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 son doing? How how's he uh, handling everything that's my going on? Son, my son. Okay. Well, as far as what's going on, I, he, he has issues with that because it it hinders him from doing the things of a five year old. You know, uh, being out playing, going to school. Uh, inside the building, uh, he misses all of that. Uh, but the fact that he is constantly with me, he he's okay with that. As long as I don't got to leave him with nobody, 
he's good. Okay, okay. Now, have you explained to him what's going on as far as, like, all the, the, not, the, the, not the COVID stuff, but, like, all the other stuff, like the unrest and the social uh, justice uh, situations that are going on as far as, like, people speaking out against that and, and that whole nine, nine yards? Like, have you explained to him what, what that all means? Actually, to be honest with you, see, no, I haven't. I, 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 haven't, I haven't really got deep into that with him. I mean, at five, I, 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 I've told him more about the COVID and the pandemic, why we can't go to the places we need to go, more so than I've told him about, you know, the unrest so much. Gotcha. Okay. Just curious because, you know, everybody has their own processes and, and things that they go through and, you know, sometimes, you know, children have questions, so I was just wondering if he posed some of those to you as far as, like, you know, what's, what's happening, especially yeah, with no, sports actually, being back in effect and all that, and then, you know, them taking that day of protest off. Right. Yeah, no, not, bro. I actually haven't, and, and to be on another, to be honest with you, man, it's just, like, we we kind of been staying away from the television. Like, he, he as far as watching news and all of that stuff, He's five, man, so he's not interested that interested in that anyway. He, he's more on his uh, YouTube, watching his little YouTubers and, and, and on his tablet playing his games. So his mind is not really focused on that at this point. Um, and, again, I, like, I, you know, I don't knock any parents who have their process of how they want to tell their kids, and maybe I should tell them these certain things. There's certain things he knows, and there's certain things I tell them that – and certain things I don't. Uh, I don't think I need to flood his brain with all of the crazy nonsense uh, that's going on. Uh, maybe I should, but at this point, I haven't. Not a problem. Just, just acting. Now, as far as now, uh, what, what's going on. I want to ask you a question. Hey, John, what, what's going on with, you know, obviously you're talking about the whole COVID situation and want to talk about it with your son, but what's going on with, like, do you have something in the works? Are you working on a pilot? Are you working on a show? with your son because it seems like your son has been uh, stealing your light, like really, and he's more interesting than you at times, you know, just seeing your son and hearing him talk and say, hey, welcome to the journey of a father and a son, and your son looks like he has, he's just made for uh, the spotlight as far as acting, talking, asking questions, I know you have to do the Q&A, and it's just great. With your son, do you feel like you want to push him toward a show, or do you already have one in the making? Okay, so two things I'm going to say. One, I'm only talking to see truth. I don't know who the hell that was. No, you're going to talk and to me. Two, you're going to talk to me, too. And, 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 and then two, <laughs> like, I, I, really, I, I really don't like how you pressing my son. Like, like, why are you all up in his business like that? Like, you, you, you know way too much about a five-year-old. For you, hey, yo, for you to be okay, 53 nah, 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 and, 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 and worrying about, about a five-year-old. <laughs> you got to you be boosting up three. the joy of a, of a father and son. And I'd be like, yo, get out the way, John. You know, I'm trying to sell it actually more entertaining. You know what I mean? You're okay, too cool, well, but your son needs you to. Hey, see, true. Remember yeah, how you yeah, started this interview <laughs> and, and you asked me, and you asked me, when am I going to cut the dead weight that's called priest? <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember when you said that at the beginning of the show? I got a question for you, yeah. see truth <laughs> When are you going to stop letting some certain person hold you back from being on top, man? Because you are so much you more interesting and so more, and so more more efficient at what you do, and you didn't have a hundred and... 80, 90 pounds of dead weight following you around, bro. <laughs> a little bit more, more weight than that. Whatever, you just ate them, whatever. Yo, no, my son, you're you off you my top five list of friends list. You're off that list right now. Whatever. <laughs> okay, well, well, that's funny because you don't even have friends. So to have a list, <laughs> <if I'm> a, <laughs> to actually have a list? Okay, so to answer your question, Mr. Kev Lawrence, Yes, my son is way more interesting than I am. You are, you're 100% right. That's why I took the path of falling back and allowing him to do what he is doing because I think, I think like I think you do too, he's a natural. He has something. Uh, and, and as his father who has been in the business, I see there is something. So 
instead of me trying to uh, constantly do my own thing, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing him forward in the sense of not, uh, I'm not Joe Jackson in him, but I do see something and I say, you know what, if you want to do that and he enjoy, enjoys doing it, then let's go ahead and have some fun and do that. And, and, and it's been working. It definitely has been working. Cool, cool. Now, as, as far as what's been going on with the, uh, the, the fat burger alerts and the updates on that, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little concerned because, you know, people have been putting on a little, little extra, you know, with this, this whole yes. COVID something that's been going on. And I've seen you post a little more than usual about, you know, being at, you know, these different fat burger locations. So I'm just just a little concerned. So I just gotta ask, you know, what's what's been going on with that? You've been at a little bit more, um, stopping a little bit more than usual at these fat burgers. So I'm just, you know, want to know okay. what, what's okay. going on with that. Okay. After he made the wall of fame on fabric, he vowed never to be eating this again. And then what happens? He's back at fat burger again. Okay. So so to answer your question, C true. Um, <laughs> um, and, be, and, and only because the two of you know this, I no longer live in Los Angeles. So when I do go there to, I guess, to, to, for, for, for sentimental reasons, uh, I stop at Fat Burger because it was a ritual of the three of us, not just me. <laughs> it was a ritual of three of us, especially – Kev Lawrence, because C Troop didn't really indulge in the fat burger itself. He would go and he'd probably get something else, and maybe every now and then he probably did. But Kev and myself, we are superstars there. His picture is right alongside mine. Uh, his, his picture is right next to mine. And again, because I don't live there anymore, and those pictures are actually sent privately. They're not posted everywhere. This is private to YouTube as a joke on our running joke. But I ain't got no problem with liking Fat Burger. Uh, when I go to L.A., I'm going to continue to stop there because it, it, gives me, it makes me feel closer to the two of you guys, especially Kev Lawrence because he's a superstar at Fat Burger. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool. No, no, no problem. Like, yeah, it, it, it was, it was no, no shade that you liking fat burger and like that. I'm just concerned that you know you might have been stopping there a little bit more frequently than usual because you know. Well, I can't, I can't look, no looking at that. <laughs> right, right. Well, now you explained it, and I, I got it. I, I understand now. And, and yes, for the record, I did get the plant versions of you know the burgers that were there. So, <laughs> just the people who, who right. may be asking about. <laughs> 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 now, <laughs> musically, as far as what's going on with that, like this is the, what what solo project is this for you now? As far as like number, like what number solo project is this for you? This is the fourth. This is this would be the fourth upcoming fourth solo project. Uh, there was three others prior to this, making this the fourth. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so what what are you, what's for, so what's the title of this one and, and what are you going in as far as like the subject matter, like the whole vibe of this particular one? Okay, so the name of the album which will be released in October is called Lawton L A W T O N. Lawton, the new chapter. And it's affectionately titled after the town that I live in here and new chapter being a new chapter in my life. Um, as far as the sound, the sound is extremely different for me, but it's not nothing you two guys as uh, music lovers have not heard before. Uh, if I was to equate it to anything, um, it's, it, it, has a, it has a more of an R&B sound. Uh, it, it definitely is a lot of hooks that are being sung on the songs, uh, opposed to, you know, my own self saying a hook or whatever. So it, it definitely has more of a, a, a R&B feel, an R&B and hip-hop feel. Gotcha. And on the, the lead, the, the, the first thing that I've been playing for a while now, the old thing back, which is, is it, is it cool to say it's an old to hip-hop? It's like a tribute to hip-hop. Like, when you listen to it, like, you hear, you know, the different, 
um, people and then the different references that you have in there to, you know, people who have passed, people who are, you know, still around, but, like, they're people who kind of laid the foundation of, you know, this thing called hip-hop. Yes, it is strictly a, uh, uh, a homage to, uh, homage to the hip-hop music that I grew up on um, and just people in general who influenced me. Uh, it is strictly that, yes. Shout out, before I even go any further, shout out to the guy, uh, Prince J, who was singing on the hook, who was singing the hook, I should say. Okay, yeah, definitely. Big up to, big up to Prince J. That's what's up. Now, you also reference um, New Edition and, you know, groups like that also in there. Like, was there ever a point in your life where you wanted to be, like, a singer and wanted to be, like, in an R&B group? <laughs> like, with the whole the outfits and dancing and all that? See, the, the funny thing is the audience don't know how well you and I and Kev are friends. So the, the funny thing is I love your line of questioning. I love your line of questioning because you're trying to – that's what a journalist does. But, of course, you know that I've always wanted to be a singer. Like, I always wanted to be in New Edition. If I could have been in any group, it would have been New Edition. I am officially, unofficially, the seventh member of New Edition. Uh, well, you know what? I will say that you got Michael Bivens in the clothing line. You already had that. Yeah, you got that of New Edition slash Bell Biv DeVoe. Shout out to Mike Biv. And, um, Shout out to Mike Bill. Uh, yeah, you're official with the socks of, of Mike Bill's socks. <laughs> yeah, okay, I got yeah. the sporty rich, the sporty rich socks. Yeah, yeah, the sporty rich socks. Shout out to Mike Bill with the new clothing line. Uh, you're an official wearer of that. We'll stick with okay. that for right now. But it's all good though. It's all good though. Um, so that, what you're saying, uh, what you're saying is the only connection I have to New Edition is Michael Bill's clothes. His socks. Oh, the socks. Okay. Just a thought. Gotcha. Just a thought. Okay. You might still right, have the, hey. uh, you might have the the new edition. Sorry, not my favorite girl. Uh, white suit in in the, in the closet, but like the, the okay. So see on, true. Like, so see true. What was your question on, again? The last street in Manhattan. You can't. Oh, you know, Manhattan. Maybe that one. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You you answered my question as far as like you want to be in the uh, R&B group and the singer. So you did, you did answer that. And, yes, for those yeah. who <laughs> may be listening and tuning in now, like, um, yeah, we, we, we do know Jono pretty well, but this is for people who don't know that much about Jono, and, you know, they may want to find out some more things about him so they can get more in contact and more in touch with the artist side of, of Jono so they understand, like, where he's coming from when they hear the music. You know, they can get that connection. So... Yes, sir. This is Thermal Sound Waves, the natural alternative to cat food radio. We're here with John O. John O. Two, here with us, C. Truth and Kevin hey. Lawrence. Hit us up three four seven four five four one two seven eight. Email us thermalsoundwaves at gmail dot com. When did you transition into you know I'm just going to be a DMC and and leave those particular hopes and dreams behind as far as like being a singer and being part of an R&B group? Like when did you oh. kind of get into that lane of like you know oh I I know I can do this this rhyme thing I'm I'm just going to do that. Oh I've never given up the dream of being an R&B singer. I still think I could. Uh, uh, <laughs> will I? <laughs> will I? I doubt it. Um, but I I am I'm one of those people you call an emotion singer. I can't sing, but I can emote the moves and the style and the hands and the and the dress very well. I am, I'm an emotion singer. Uh, I'm 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 definitely Michael Bivens. I'm I'm in the background. I'm in the background. I'm good at being the background. Uh, Ralph and and Bobby and Johnny can all be up front. I just want to be part of the group and get the lady. That's it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Or maybe you and Smooth B from Nice and Smooth should maybe collaborate with him because, you know, he he, he was um, a Bobby Brown. Yeah, he, he has that kind of whole thing, too, with the background. And, and he's actually, you know, but done some work with them and, and, you know, did some writing for them as well. So I think, you know, maybe you and him can get together and do, like, a project. That would kind of be kind of cool, you know. We like could, we could call it oh, so, or something. We could call it Oh So Smooth. Oh, okay. I'm O and he's right. cool, and the name of the album could be Oh So Smooth. Shout out go. to Oh So Cool. Absolutely. No, we could. Right. Yeah, we, we could call that. 
we could. Hey, I didn't ask you. 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 I didn't ask you at all. <laughs> your, your opinion doesn't count at all. You know what? I got to say this. You know, even though you said, you know, emotion, singer like Michael Bivens, for people that don't know, and they'd be like, you know, Michael Bivens really wasn't a singer. However, Michael Bivens was a very shrewd businessman, a very good executive, and, and in fine talent. So shout out to Michael Bivens. A lot of people don't realize that yeah. from Boys to Men, ABC, uh, the people. And he was a good baller, too, her. Yeah, he actually is very good at basketball. I, I would agree. He don't want no problems with me, but. We're going to have to set that up. In the, in the big, we're going to they, they, have to set that up and put, that, put you in the whole fold of our, our uh, celebrity games. We have, we have a number of games that we're supposed to play, a number of challenges that we got going on. We got Murder Mook. We're supposed to play him. Um, Joe Key, Noah, Derek Rose, we're supposed to play him. Um, half of the WNBA was supposed to play as well. Um, and we can, we can add you in the fold too. Mike Bivens, John O, we can put all y'all in there as well. <laughs> the okay. That all right. tournament that we're about to, about to have. Okay. What'd you say, Kevin? Well, I'm down. You ain't got nothing to say. Yeah, because he knows. Yeah, he knows he, know he don't want this. He don't want this skill. <laughs> <laughs> he over there. He over there at Fat Burger now, getting them burger stuff. In his mouth. <laughs> what are, What are some of the things, um, as far as like your interests and things like that, that people may not know about that you have that you put into your music? That's not necessarily music, but it's just things that influence your music. Right. Well, the majority of my music is always influenced by my life, uh, things that are going on. My son. Uh, my relationships, my family, um, and this particular project itself is very heavy on that. Um, with the, there's a couple of songs on there that's you know strictly on the on the less rhyme and, and 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 you know braggadocious or whatever you want to call it. But I would say 85% of it has something to do with either my 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 relationships, women. Um, my my family and my son. Um, so I I really feel it's like more of a grown up thing for me. I've been doing I've been rapping for a very long time, and I think as an artist you grow. There's periods where you are all about I'm the best MC in the world, and then at some points you grow up and you feel like yo man I I got bills to pay. Uh, let me rhyme about these bills. My life's about to get cut off. Uh, you know, it's things that's real grown-up problems. So to answer your question, the influences are really just all around me in my everyday life and, and, and things that I deal with on the constant. Right. So what what is some of the, I mean, you, I know you mentioned your family and things and relationships and things like that, but what are some of the specific things that you're talking about, like on this particular project that people can hear? Um, you don't have to name song titles, but just, just, Things that you're addressing. I'm I'm talking about I'm talking about my relationship with my ex, my son's ex, my son's mother. Uh, I'm talking about relationships with a few exes. Um, I'm talking about uh, making it big uh, in this world at what I'm doing. Um, I'm talking about how I fucked up in in my post. Can I curse? Uh, no, nah, no. Nah, listen, so let's, let's PG, uh, so <laughs> okay. So how how I messed up uh, with certain women that I shouldn't have. Um, so it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of tackling grown up topics. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. So it, it's definitely a, not not a coming to base, but it, it it definitely shows your growth of where you are now in comparison to um, what you've done in the past. Exactly. I would definitely change. now you now you also um, do things on stage and performance wise and you know not as a singer or, or, or dancer or stuff like that but as an actual uh, actor so where are you with with that whole particular journey like are you still doing projects or are you just concentrating on music at this point well well to me, well because of all of this whole COVID thing, you know, the, the industry has kind of slowed down or shut down. Um, it's slowly getting back into it. 
But if I'm being honest with myself, I've allowed myself to dive deeper into the music, one, because I have more creative uh, uh, freedom to do that and not have to be at the constraints of a studio or, uh, or, or script or anything like that. And I can do music anywhere now. So it doesn't, I don't need to actually go to, you know, uh, Calliope or whatever major record studio or uh, studio recording studio. I can get it done at home. So the music is, is what I've been concentrating on a lot. Um, have I given up on acting? No, I haven't. But right now, acting, actually nothing is paying the bills right now. Uh, so um, my focus, though, has been on writing my music uh, and writing some scripts. But my main focus right now has been this music, man, and this particular project, because I really feel this project is strong. I, I, I have a lot of faith in it. I know artists say this all the time, but I feel like I did my best stuff with this project right here. I see no doubt. We hear Thermal Sound Waves and Natural Alternatives to Fast Food Radio with John O. joining us. Steve Cook and Kevin Lawrence hit us up at 347-454-1278. Email us thermalsoundwaves at gmail.com. Now, if you have like a, a, a budget, you know, pretty sizable one, you know, in, in the millions and whatnot, and you can do whatever you wanted to do as far as putting together a project for, for screen, for film, TV, or what have you, um, what would your your, your project be? What would your passion be or, or, or something you would want to work on? Other than the, other than the thermal sound wave story? Uh, let me think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, other than that one. Um, you know, which is in development right now, actually. Which is in development right now, right. Um, to be honest, I don't know how much it would, it would generate, you know, the numbers but I've always had a very deep passion for two people uh, in this business that I wish I could possibly do their story. One would be Red Fox. Um, mm. And the other, the, the other, again, probably a dark horse, but would be Gregory Hines. Um, I don't wow. know if they would ever make a Gregory Hines story, but I think this they guy should. is very – they should. They should. I thought he was – he, Jamie Fox, Jamie Fox is a descendant to me of a Gregory Hines in the sense of Gregory Hines to me was one of those people who was able to do it all from sing, dance, act, whatever it it took. He was one of those last Mohegans, and I see that in Jamie in the sense with Jamie, he acts, he he sings. You know, he plays piano. He's a very multi-talented dude. And between Mr. Hines and, and, and Mr. Fox, there wasn't too many people that I've seen like that. So I think, I think Greg's story is a very, I think it's a very interesting story, especially the fact that, you know, he started very young with his brother, uh, Maurice, and they were, dance, they were awesome dancers. Um, he comes from the school of a Sammy Davis Jr., so I think all of that is, I think that's it's interesting. Gregory Hines is one of the only actors I know who sat and held his own with Luther Vandross, dude. Like, like that's, that's pretty big. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you should, you should definitely do that or, or, you know, work on that because, I mean, numbers aside, like, it's, it's about the stories. Like, the numbers will come if the story is good. Like, people, right. people connect to the stories. Like, people aren't connected to the numbers. And I think people get that twisted at times. Like, people, oh, well, this is the numbers. I mean, that only matters to people who are doing, like, the books and the marketing and, like, you know, all that. Like, people who are connected to stories and, and being entertained and all that kind of stuff. That's why people go and, you know, see things or connect to things or, you know, really, really check out entertainment. They're not, they're not worried about numbers. So I, right. I think if that's that's those stories are I mean I'm familiar with those stories so I mean I could say that you know they are interesting but I think if people get the chance to actually you know see those stories and find out more about these two incredible people and what they contributed to like entertainment and to the world in general like they would enjoy those things so yeah I, I definitely agree with you on on that one I I would love to see those 
Like both of them. Yes, both of them. Like I mean, and, and, and Gregory Hines. Yeah, I mean, and then, come on, and Red Fox, I mean, we ain't even got to talk about it. I mean, legend. He, he, he's legend. Legend. Like legend. It's legendary. Yeah. And then some of the people who people may love, like, if they ask the people that are their favorites as far as, like, entertainment comedy goes, like, a lot of them pay tribute to him. <laughs> like, like, yo, that, yeah. that's, that's where I got some of my stuff from. <laughs> you know, from, from, from the Eddie Murphys to the Chris Rocks to the Chris Tuckers, all of them, you know, would, would, would put Red in that list of, like, yo, you know, we, we took a piece of what Red did. Right. Right, exactly. And, and he's another one, when you, when you talk about people who were doing things early, like he was one of those first crossover uh, comedians to do TV. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. He had a show in, uh, in major prime time. <clears throat> you know, major I mean, prime time. I mean, that, that was like, I think it was NBC it was on. It, it was. was it, I think it was NBC. Yeah, I, I mean, it was. you know, he was a trendsetter for that, like, so if, if it wasn't for him putting down those particular, you know, roots, it's like the, the Martins and um, the Seinfelds and the whoever, other, whatever other comedian you want to name that actually, you know, made that transition to TV, like, uh, I don't think it would have been as easy for them and, to do that. And, and you have to also think, take in consideration his style of comedy, his, his live yeah. comedy was extremely dirty, wasn't made for TV. So for him to be able to switch that and get on national television and have a hit show knowing that his style of comedy wasn't made for regular TV, that's awesome. Definitely, definitely. Now, who are some of the people that you, you like now that you're digging right now that are, like, currently doing their thing, either music, film, comedy, what have you? Like, who are some of the people you're, you're vibing to right now? Um, musically, um, hmm, that's a good question, man. Um, I mean, I, 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 I love Drake. I, I do. Some people get on me about that, but I think he is. Mm-hmm. I, uh, he's one of my favorites. Um, I like, I like uh, Anderson Pac. Uh, I think he's extremely talented. Um, yeah. Yo, there's this, this there's this young boy out of California. His name is, I believe, it's pronounced Fora, P H O R A. Um, I've been listening to a lot of him lately. Uh, young rapper kid. I think he's in his early twenties or whatever. This kid to me is pretty dope. I rocks with him heavy. So um, okay. And and and. And, 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 and I, would be, I would be stoned if I wouldn't say uh, as far as acting-wise, especially because of the tragic uh, death of this man. Um, I, um, yeah, I, I, he, Chadwick Boseman was one of my favorites coming up right now. So to, if, I, if I had to say somebody... Uh, acting wise, I, you know, I would look to him. And this, this is prior to his death, and me not trying to jump on no bandwagon and say, oh, you know, because he passed away. Nah, prior to this, his body of work stood for it spoke for itself. So um, to actually hear the behind the scenes of this man for four years battling cancer and doing all the projects that he did and doing them well even solidifies it more for me that he was he was dope. Yeah, definitely. Rest in power. Yes. For sure, for sure. So anybody else? So you got you got Fora, you got uh Chad Bozeman. Chad Chadwick Chadwick Bozeman. Chadwick Bozeman, yeah, Chadwick uh, Fora, Bozeman. Drake, uh uh um musically. Uh it doesn't have to be a good question now. It could be any other Oh any other any um other. Yeah, it doesn't have to be music. It could be any anybody in entertainment. No, I'm not really checking for anybody. Okay, is, is somebody on my radar. Yeah, yeah. No, um, no, no, no. no um, just, just your, your opinion. That's all. Like, right. um, just from I mean, your point of view. Here's the thing. Though. Right. Here's the thing. I have a lot of friends that are in the entertainment field that are actors, um, that are either family members or very close friends, and 
I check for them. I look, I look at them because I'm so close to them. But sometimes because I'm so close, I forget to mention those people. But, you know, I mean, my circle, my inner circle, like Atheon Crockett, like Omari Hardwick, mm-hmm. like my homegirl yeah. uh, uh, Aisha Hines, uh, like my inner circle, I, I always right. look to them. But, right. but sometimes I get caught up in the fact that we're so close, so I don't, I kind of forget about them in a sense. Because I don't look at them as celebrities. Right, right, right. That's, that's a pretty, pretty great inner circle. I mean, those are some people yeah, that are putting it on. Oh, yeah, and, yeah and they also they, they, people. They're, they're people who have built their path, like, you know, very, very methodically. Like, it, it hasn't been like some meteoric rise, like, oh, boom, we're here. You know, it's like they, if you, if you know them, you, you've seen their work and like, okay, this, this person's been coming. They've been building that, building and building until they got to where they are and still, and still building. And still building. Exactly. I feel like I feel like I'm in a great circle of friends. Um, have I had the success that they had? No. Um, but just as they have been trotting along to get where they are uh, and to continue to go, I think I've been under the great tutelage and watching and trotting my own little path. So, you know, I get there when I get there. Um, but I'm still right. trying, and and they always say, you know, surround yourself with people that are like minded, and that you want to see yourself at. And I think I've done that. I'm I'm surrounded right. by the right folks. Definitely, definitely, absolutely. Thermal the, sound waves, a natural alternative. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying, with the exception of Kev Lawrence, I don't know why he's around <laughs> us. <laughs> but but anyway. <laughs> See, right, right. see truth. I learned. See truth. I learned so much from you, <laughs> but, but but the other half. Yeah, man. I, I don't. I don't know, man. You're I think he just. Hater. I think not even half the hater. Hey, you the whole hater. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, whatever, man. I, 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 I be learning. I be learning. Don't be fine. You learn on this side. I think. I think Kevlar. Kevlar is only around us because he know we gonna blow. So he, he's attached himself to us <laughs> in hopes when we, you, when we you, make you it to that spot. That means, yo, Kevin Lawrence, I love you, bro. And I get it. I understand, man. I understand. God, <laughs> man. Hey, hey, you always have that dude in the crew that's the, that's the flunky that you love him. Yeah. You do that. You do that. You do that. You do You Hey, hey, you, you are Charlie Mack. That's what you are. You you had a whole lot of jobs, and then and you you just got lucky being with us. You just got lucky to be around us. So, <laughs> oh man, shout out to Billy. Yikes. <laughs> oh, man, man, I love you. Though. You know I love you, Kevlar, and I love I love Charlie Mack too. So, <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. For Yo, those who are to Charlie Mack man. being in that strong middle of the summer with Nick Mill for years that we still play. Charlie Mack, no stop the no violence. Doubt. Yeah, it's Charlie Mack, man, no doubt, man. Thermal sound waves and natural alternative to fast food radio. We're here with John O. C. Truth, Kev Lawrence. That's what it is. And for those who are, are listening, man, it's a lot of inside stuff that you're not aware of. But it's a lot of inside know, stuff. We, 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 we know what it is, man. We know what it is, no doubt. But um, definitely, man, I'm, I, when you do that sitcom, I'm definitely looking to get that call. Like, yo, so we, we we got this thing, like, popping right now. What's up? Like, Let's let's go. I'm, I'm waiting hey, for that call when that when that goes down because I know that's gonna happen. It it is, and you know, to speak of that, the thing that I'm really working on, and Kevin Lawrence kind of touched on it a little bit. I am focusing on my son. My son, I, I I'm trying to get together a, a cartoon called John the Father. I, I did a pitch for it, um, and I put out some um, feelers about it, and I even you know got the the artwork and stuff printed up, and that the biggest thing that I'm trying to do right now. I did a little thing online called John the Father, live action, back when my son was like maybe nine, ten months, and it was it, it, it was received well. But as he got yeah, older, I dope. feel like, yeah, as he got older, I just was like, oh, man, you know, it would be dope if we tried to do this on an animated side. This way he could stay young 
in the animation forever. So uh, I, I, I got together uh, a, t- a guy who, who, who is an awesome, awesome, um, he does animation, an uh, uh, animator. And he put together this thing. I'm just trying to really punch up the script. And then COVID hit, and we wasn't able to record the voiceovers the way we wanted to. Um, and then I moved. I'm not in L.A. anymore next to Avion and the young lady who is the, also the co-star, Marcella. So all of that hit, and things kind of took a little backseat. But that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to do as far as acting is concerned. And it's not really my project. Though I'm in it, it's more for my son. That's what's up. <clears throat> yeah, that, yeah, definitely. Um, I, that, that's going to take off once, once that pops. Like, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Because if so there's anything I, I will be, like what you put out, yeah, that's, that's going to be dope. I, I, I will definitely be calling you, see true, to be, you know, I don't know what as far as, like, in the writer's room or, or something. Now, Ken Lawrence, he'll be getting the coffee for us. He'll be, he'll be that dude who we be like, <laughs> yo, go get the coffee. Go downstairs to the, su- to the store and get some coffee for us, man. <laughs> Oh, man. But I'm a I'm a compensate him. I'm a compensate him very well. He'd be a very high paid coffee dinner. <laughs> you don't pay me that right, money. Right. I ain't hearing that. Whatever. <laughs> oh man. So once again, the the project is called what? What's the name of the project? Lawton. Law. Uh, the 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 new Lawton. album is Lawton. Lawton, the new chapter. The single out now is called Old Thing Back, featuring my man Prince J. Um, and, you know, look forward to hopefully the, the John the Father cartoons uh, coming out. Definitely, definitely, no doubt, no doubt. Um, tell, hey, tell anything that you want up? the people to – what you say, Ken? No, I had to give a big shot to Texas also. That's all. It's a great state of Texas. Okay. Yeah, so any, any last things that you want the people to know about, John Oak? The second? Yeah, um, also. Also, also look out for, uh, oh, man, I hate saying this, but, hey, look out for the new Deck of Brother project sometime next year. Uh, 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 <laughs> you know, I can't give you no date or specifics, uh, but I believe sometime in 2021, uh, yeah, that, that'll happen. Oh, and, and big up to Auntie E for seven on, on Instagram. No doubt, no doubt. And, and let everybody know all, all your socials so they can get in contact with you as well on that tip. Okay, yeah. Up on, hit me up on IG it's jo- at John Ali. That's J-O-H-N-O-L-L-I-E. On Twitter, it's just John Ali, J-O-H-N-O-L-L-I-E. Uh, on uh, Facebook, you type in John Ali. Everywhere is pretty much John Ali. Only on Twitter is uh, just John Ali. But you can find me through Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all that at John Alley. No doubt, no doubt, definitely. And one last thing, the the difference between LA to Lawton, as far as like <clears throat> that that oh transition, God. like <laughs> what what tells the difference between those two two cities? Hey, there's no fat burger in Lawton, man. <laughs> that, uh, that's, 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 <laughs> um. Listen, the difference between L.A. and Law, man, is like the difference between L.A. and probably Montana or Iowa or anywhere, those places in the south or the Midwest. Lawton is a very small town. It's an hour, outside, an hour and probably an hour and 20 minutes outside of Oklahoma City. Um, it's very small. It's it's an army-based town, so it's very diverse in the sense that there's black people, there's white people, uh, there's Asian, there's all of that, but it's a very, very small town. And I'll say this to keep it in transparency. I left L.A. last year in November. Um, I was very, very hesitant to come here because I had lived in L.A. for 19 years, and that's what I've known for the last 19 years back and forth between L.A. and New York. So I was very hesitant. But I got here, and I honestly have to say, um, because of being here, I feel like I wrote my, my best album thus far. So it was a reason God brought me here for whatever it may be. I don't know. 
Um, and I, 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 I kind of fought against it, but I was supposed to be here, even if it was just to write this album and then move on from wherever I go next. But I definitely feel there was a reason for me being here. Um, it's much cheaper. I have a very nice place. I, I, I enjoy living where I live. Um, it's very slow paced. Me coming from being born in New York and always zooming here and there and then going to L.A. and always zooming here and there, this is a much, much slower pace and at times a bit boring. But I'm with my son. I think as long as I got him with me, I'm good because I could have stayed in L.A. and then had him go stay with his mom or his grandmother, and it probably wouldn't have been the same for us. Uh, as a black man, I feel like I need to be with my son, especially in these times, these days and times. Um, so I'm glad that God put me here for a reason. And as long as he put us here together, I'm good. <clears throat> That's what's up, man. And, and, and big up to you. Man, not, for us. You know, there's a big mass exit out of L.A. right now. Uh, man, so it looks like you actually left during a very pivotal time for the great old yeah. area. And, and big up to you for putting in all that work with, with your son and actually, you know, doing what you got to do on that tip. And I, I say that to say, cause, you know, I don't think enough farmers get the credit for, for taking care of their children. So I always got to take my hat off and, and, and give a big up to fathers who are definitely putting in the work and doing the work like that because, you know, fathers get a lot of bad rap out here. So I just got to say right. that. No, I, I, I appreciate it, man. I, I, you know, I, again, we, we are personal friends, so y'all know that wherever I go, he's with me. So, but I also feel like as, as, as a father, uh, I don't look for the accolades because I feel this is what I'm supposed to, this is what men are supposed to do who have their kids. Right. So we don't really supposed to look for the accolades, but trust me, I understand it and I appreciate it wholeheartedly. No doubt, no doubt. Definitely, man. So everybody out there, man, make sure you get that Lawton project. You know, make sure you get that, stream that, download it, you know, keep it a heavy rotation and all that. You know, we've been <clears throat> spending the old thing back from off of there. We're going to be spending more joints from off of that project, man. Lawton, make sure you get that, man. John O, thank you once again for joining us on the program. We do appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll see you after the next Fat Burger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I can't wait. Um, we have the um, uh, fifth year reunion uh, at the Fat Burger on <laughs> on Ventura and Lancashire. Uh, that will be yeah, uh, yeah, February twenty exactly. third. <laughs> yeah, not not that other one because that other one was kind of like really really that, 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 that was <laughs> that was kind of nervous. That was Kev Lawrence's yeah, was... choice to go to that Fat Burger. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Once in a while, he got stuck. He got stuck in that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope that's what that one. That one. That one is, is the reason why I started wearing masks <laughs> because of that one. <laughs> and and eating their plant based burgers. <laughs> he was like, "Now nah, I'm good on it." <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. But, yeah, man, so uh, enjoy the rest of your day, night, evening, afternoon, and so forth, man. And uh, we definitely going to check it again soon. You got it, man. Thermal sound wave, wave.